What is going on everybody? My name is Brendan from Outbound Media, and today I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know about layer masks here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. So the first question you might be asking if you're new to Photoshop is what is a layer mask? Essentially what a layer mask is, is it allows you to either make a layer completely visible or invisible. So just to give you guys a bit of an example, I thought the easiest way to explain this is through making a layer mask with a big red circle. So here is our red circle. So let's just say we only want to see parts of this. Your first instinct might be to grab your eraser tool and just erase out the parts that you don't want. But now, as you can see over on our layer here, now the, the parts that we just erased no longer exist and we can never get them back again unless we go back in our history. What if I want to erase something but I might want to add some of it back afterwards or make small adjustments to it? Then that's when a layer mask would come in. So I'm just going to press Command Z to undo my actions there. So now I'm going to create a layer mask for this red dot. So if I go down to my la layer mask icon, which is this button down here, you'll see that we get this white box. So what this white box is, is that is our layer mask. And as you can see, it is completely white. So that means it is 100% visible. So now if we get our brush tool and then make our foreground color black, and now if we paint over, you can see it still appears to be erasing out the circle, but in reality, it is just painting on our layer mask and our circle has not been changed at all. So basically what has happened is we have made parts of our image invisible. So now if I, if I change my foreground color back to white and I paint it over the same areas, all of that will just come back. It, it, is, it never got erased. It's, it simply just got masked over top of. So now if we pick a different color that let's say, let's say we pick a light gray color. So let's go somewhere right in the middle. And now if we paint over with on our layer mask, if we paint over on a layer mask, you can see it erases some of it, but it, it seems like it just takes down the opacity of our red circle. And so what it is, is on a layer mask, pure white is 100% visible, while black is 100% transparent. All the shades of gray in between white and black will mask out at a certain opacity. So the closer you are to white, the less of an effect it will have, whereas the opposite is true. And if you are the closer to black your gray is, the more transparent it will be. Just to reiterate with a red circle, we can go down to our layer mask icon to create our layer mask. And we know we have our layer mask once our little white box is here. When it's white like this, when it's 100% white, just like this, that means that everything is 100% visible in our layer mask. Now with our layer mask selected, we can go to our brush tool, make sure we have black as our foreground color. And if we paint over, if we paint on top of our layer mask, it simply masks out those parts of our layers without actually erasing anything. It is simply just masking it out. So it's not making any changes to the layer itself. It's only adding and subtracting from the layer mask, depending on the color you have. Now, if you want to add something back to your layer mask, just remember to use white and then just paint it back on because white is 100% visible. All right, so now let's get rid of our red circle. So the other thing that you'll find is when you're using a layer adjustment, so let's use our exposure layer adjustment for the sake of ease. So as you can see, any layer adjustment that you click, no matter what ones I click on, they all come with this white box. And as we now know, that white box is our layer mask. Any adjustments that we make to our layer adjustment, we can do the exact same thing as we did with our red circle. We can mask, thing, we can mask things out rather than erasing them from our layer. So just for an extreme example, let's just put the saturation to 100%. And let's move our vibrant so it's even more intense. So obviously this, you would never ever do this, but just for sake of example, I'm just going to go like this. So as you can see, this is, this is our, my values. I put everything to hundred percent and now everything is super saturated. So if I click on my layer mask of, if I click on the layer mask of my layer adjustment, I can again, get my brush tool, make sure black is selected because I want to take away something. And I'm just going to run over everything that I do not want to be saturated. 
So now as you can see our layer adjustment only affects the back corner of our image because we just masked out all of this other all of the extra all the other areas that we don't want to see it. That might have seemed like a lot of brushing because we only wanted a small area of this. So now if I just start again, I'm just going to erase my layer adjustment and I'm just going to start again. Put everything up to 100%. Now let's say I want just this, but I don't want to have to erase everything else in the image, right? So what I can do is with my layer mask selected, I can press command and I, and now my layer mask will become black. And as we now know, black means 100% transparent or invisible. So now, although it still has the same values, it is completely invisible because our layer mask has made it invisible. So now if we wanted just this one corner to be vibrant, we can switch our foreground color to white. And now we can paint white onto our layer mask. So now doing the opposite of what we've been kind of doing before. So now, as you can see, I didn't have to do all the work of masking out this whole mountain area in the front. I could just invert my layer mask, make it 100% invisible, and then paint in the areas that I want that adjustment to affect. So now let's, let's erase our vibrant layer because we don't need to use this example anymore. And now I'm gonna go to my exposure and I'm gonna put this up super duper bright just to just for sake of just for the sh sake of explaining so as you can see now everything in my image is super super bright so now let's say that I only want the top bit of my image to be bright like this as we've learned we have two options so I could make my foreground color black and with my brush tool I could go and just mask out all the areas that I don't want our layer adjustment to affect like that like so and but as we as we all know that does take a little bit of more brushing right so let's say we just want to save time as much as we can so now we can press with our layer mask selected we can press command i to invert our layer mask now we can do the opposite of what we just did so with the brush tool selected and now our foreground color as white we can now paint white onto our layer mask to select the certain areas of it that we want to be showing so again, that was just another example of kind of what we just went over with our Vibrance tool. Now, let's bring our adjustment down to something that we actually might want to use in real, in an actual situation. So let's say I want the left side of my image to be a little bit brighter than my right. So what I can do is I, bring, I have brought my exposure up and now I want this exposure except only on the left side and I want it to be a nice gradient. So what I can do is to get rid of everything, I can press Command and I to make our layer mask black. So now everything is invisible. Now if I go to my gradient tool and make sure my gradient color is white, as you can see, I can drag, with my layer mask selected, I can drag out to the side and now that gradient was applied to our layer mask. Since it's white, it's making parts of our layer mask completely visible once again. But now in the form of a gradient. So as you can see, if I turn this on and off, it is only affecting that one little corner. So let's say I want to replace my sky. So we can also do that through layer masks. So to make this easy, I'm just going to grab my quick selection tool and I'm just going to run this over the mountains here. And it did a pretty okay job. So now you can see our marching ants are around everywhere. And with our layer selected, we can click our layer mask icon. So now as you can see, it put our selection onto a layer mask for us. So if I turn off our bottom layer, you can see what our layer mask looks like. Our layer mask has completely masked out all of the mountains. So since we want the opposite of that, what we can do is, like I said before, we can use our trick of pressing Command and I to invert our layer mask. So now our layer mask has completely masked out our sky, but again, it is not. it did not get erased, it is just masked out. We know this because one, it shows us on here, but just for sake of example again, I if I paint white onto my layer, you can see that the sky comes back. It was never actually erased. It's simply just masked out. So for example, if I wanted to put black behind our image for some reason, I don't know why I'd want to, but let's just say I want to, um, I can just make my layer black. I can make my layer black by just pressing Alt and Delete. And then as you can see, now our whole background is black. 
let's just say that's what we wanted to replace our sky with. So we can do that by using our layer masks. So what we went over the, in this tutorial, we learned what a layer mask actually is, how a layer mask works, and what the difference is between erasing and using a layer mask. So when you erase something, it is gone forever. It You are literally erasing it from your layer. It is It no longer exists. Well, when you use a layer mask, you're simply masking it out, so you're essentially hiding it or making it invisible, although you are not changing the layer in it, the layer itself in any way. The next thing that we learned is that we can make a selection and then put it onto our layer mask by just clicking our layer mask icon. It'll automatically transfer over our selection onto a layer mask for us. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. I hope this helped you and helped you to understand layer masks a little bit better. So this is something that you will use pretty much every single time you go to use Photoshop and really dial in the adjustments that you're using. Layer masks will become your best friend if they haven't already. I make new tutorials just like this one every single Wednesday to help you guys learn Photoshop. So if, you, if you're interested and want to keep up to date with that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more of my work, make sure to check out my website at outboundmedia.net. If you're more of an Instagram kind of person, find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Again, my name is Brendan from Outbound Media. I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.